Okay, allow me to explain this circuit. It's basically you have one coil here, another coil here. They're both Bedini bifilers systems. There's your north magnet and the north coil. So when the energy from battery B is being triggered by this magnet, the only alteration is pretty much the way it's wired. It's going to dump out the diode 1N4007, 4007 into, well, you know, it takes energy from battery. Let's start over here. Let's start with this coil, okay? It takes energy from battery A. It goes through the coil out into the plus of battery B. You tie the negative of battery B to the negative of battery A. That way, when this magnet is over here, it triggers this coil and it will dump the energy from A into B. That's when this magnet's here. Okay? So let's say the magnet's turning and it hits coil B from battery B. Okay? There's no magnet here now, so this coil is inactive. But if you have it wired this way, when this coil is activated by the trigger, it's energized and it dumps from battery B, coil B will dump into battery A on the plus terminal. As long as the negative of battery A is tied to the negative of battery B. That's not a problem because you only have two magnets on this wheel and they're um, 45 degrees out of phase or whatever so when one coil is being triggered the other one's not so you have two transistors in this circuit one transistor for coil coil A and one transistor for coil B okay coil A is coil A because it derives its energy from battery A <clears throat> and when it gets pulsed by this magnet when this magnet lands here coil, coil A will pulse out into battery B okay so okay and when that happens you know of course you can see there's only two magnets on the wheel so one coil is being pulsed at a time at this moment in this setup where the magnet is coil B from battery B is being pulsed and dumping into battery A when the magnet moves along and hits here, coil A will be energized and dump into battery B. I haven't built this yet, but I intend to. I just figured let me put this out there. You need to have both battery A and B has to have a 24 volt capacitor, supercapacitor bank placed across it in order to catch efficiently the energy pulse otherwise the lead acid 12 volt batteries here they will not catch that energy the radiant energy they'll only catch some of it not enough to keep this thing running longer but if you have 24 volt caps placed across the batteries not 12 volt capacitors 24 because 12 volts, you know, it's highly likely that 12 volts will not be a high enough rating for these capacitors. They'll blow. The voltage across these coils is higher than hundreds of volts. But thankfully, your batteries A and B will be either lead acid or lead alum, which will help catch those high voltage pulses. But they won't catch the, um, the the leftover energy 
like the, the super caps will do. So this system is designed to have super caps placed across both batteries, A and B. You can add a high voltage cap across there if you want. I don't think it's necessary because the batteries are lead acid or lead alum and they'll do fine catching the high voltage spike to prevent your transistor from blowing. But uh, yeah, you can also connect all the negatives from battery uh, A and B to earth ground. That might give better performance. I'm not sure yet. Like I said, I didn't build it. But this system, you know, is basically going, should recycle the pulse from battery B into the pulse from battery A. Um, now you're wondering, yeah, the energy flowing through coil B will also flow through coil A at the same time if it's wired up correctly. And you're thinking, won't that stop the wheel? No, it won't because there's no magnet here at that time. So, you know, whatever the the energy from battery B going through the coil, dumping into battery A, whatever battery A doesn't catch is going to go through the coil and back to battery B. So there's very little room for losing energy here. It seems like, you know, the only way that you'd lose energy is if you had four magnets on this wheel and that system wouldn't work. This system would not work with four magnets. It can only work with two because you can't be pulsing these coils at the same time with a magnet, that is. A magnet hitting your trigger. You can't trigger these two at the same time because if you had a magnet here, the energy from here will also flow through here and you'll have a north field here and a north field here. Now that should work too if you had a magnet there, but the idea here is um, you don't want to trigger the transistor on the circuit A when the tr transistor on circuit B is being triggered because then you blow out each other's transistors. They'll blow each other out. Um, assuming the battery is here and it still needs a charge, if it's fully charged, then the coil will start taking energy when battery B is pulsing. If this battery is charged, and so are your capacitors, then this coil will start taking the energy at the same time that this gets pulsed. And that might cause your trigger to, to go off for the other transistor, and it could cause it to blow. That's the only problem or issue I see happening, but you can You can uh, adjust that with putting a resistor on the output of each of these batteries so to, as to limit the amount of current they use. You can even use a, a potentiometer to figure out what resistance you would need to use. But a resistor would lower the uh, amplitude on the pulse so that it won't make it all the way to here. Instead, it'll just fill up this coil mostly because you do have a diode here causing some impedance so the energy if it's low enough you don't want to give it too much amperage I, I advise putting a resistor on the output of each of these plus terminals on each of these batteries I would say maybe uh, <clears throat> two or three ohms maybe it would be enough to limit the current it all depends what kind of coil you're using but I guess uh, if you use a coil that has higher resistance, that's probably better. That way you use less energy. The goal here is to turn this wheel with the force of the magnet and its pull force on the core. These coils have cores, iron cores. So these magnets pull to these cores naturally. So you don't want to use more power than you really need to use to just simply break the connection between the, the coil and the magnet. I'm sorry, to break the connection between the core and the magnet. You only need to use enough power in this coil to break that connection and that's it, no more. If you do that, there should not be enough energy to reach this coil to cause this trigger 
to turn off to turn on the transistor at the same time that this transistor is on on this circuit remember you got two circuits here two coils two individual circuits two individual triggers each coil is a bifiler and when one triggers the other is not supposed to be triggering you can you can definitely do it with this system and playing with your uh, resistance on the output okay folks uh, comment I guess like and subscribe as everybody says uh, first time I've done that all right have a good one